the government. Think about how many hospitals this man could build and equip, roads, schools, or other critical service delivery areas. There's no way this country's resource envelope will benefit the city. For as long as a huge portion of this money is lost to fees and different levels of government, it is no wonder the government is proposing to increase taxes on certain commodities and services, which are going to further burden the population that is already not seeing adequate service delivery for the tax money that they pay currently. We need to save this money that is stolen by the thieves. That way we don't have to dig deeper into the pockets of the struggling citizenry. As we speak, ladies and gentlemen, traders downtown are against high taxes. Their businesses are crumbling. They borrow money to start businesses and they struggle every step of the way. And government is tightening the loose around them. We need to listen and respond to the cries of the citizens of Uganda. And we want to join the traders and all other Ugandans that are saying it's not right for us to put a chokehold on the citizenry. And yet, they struggle to see service delivery at the end of the day. And yet, they see this money that they give in taxes being stolen. And that's why the traders are saying no. And we want to encourage them as citizens of this country to speak out. And so we do support their peaceful demonstration to say this is wrong, enough is enough. Ladies and gentlemen, in line with our mandate of keeping the government in check, we pledge to relentlessly expose this corruption in whichever government entity it exists, and regardless of who is involved in this corruption. The opposition has chosen an approach to resource allocation that places human rights at its very core. We believe that access to basic necessities such as clean water, healthcare, education, housing, shelter and social protection is not a luxury, but an inalienable right bestowed upon every citizen of Uganda. By prioritizing the allocation of resources towards these fundamental needs, we not only empower communities to withstand the trials they face, but also reaffirm our dedication to upholding the dignity of each and every Ugandan citizen. A review of the government's budgeting process has consistently uncovered apparent misappropriation and misallocation of resources, notably through program-based budgeting. This has reaffirmed our determination to prepare the opposition budget for the fiscal year 2024-2025. This budget is more than simply a financial plan. It illustrates our commitment to strengthening communities through effective service delivery. As the opposition, we don't simply oppose. We offer alternatives. And that's what we are doing today. That's what we are here for today. Even though these are alternatives are ignored most times. But at least we get to paint a picture to Ugandans of what ought to be done. We are telling Ugandans, if we were the ones in power currently, this is what we would do. This is how we would allocate the resource envelope. And that's important. Because they want to see leadership. They want to see people that have a vision for the country. That's what we are doing today. I'm sure you hear many times people who will say, those opposition people, they simply oppose. No. It's not just opposing for the sake of it. We are showing Ugandans this is the direction we ought to take. And we'll keep doing that. So that we show them that we are a serious government in waiting. Honorable colleagues and esteemed guests, the human rights based approach that we have adopted forms the foundation of our alternative budget, demonstrating our consistent commitment to defending the basic freedoms and rights of every Ugandan citizen. We hope that by adopting this approach, the budgeting process will become an effective instrument for social justice and equitable development. Therefore, 
In order to ensure that no one is left behind, it is imperative that government allocates resources in a manner that promotes accountability and transparency. That's something that we are pushing for and will keep pushing and will not stop. There are voices that might try to silence us, but it's our duty to make sure that government is accountable, to make sure that every penny of tax money that is paid by Ugandan citizens is put to proper use. Honorable colleagues, at the heart of our responsibilities as elected representatives to hold the government accountable and ensure that the allocation and utilization of resources are in alignment with the genuine needs and aspirations of the citizenry. We've got to prioritize. Sometimes it looks like government has got its priorities the wrong side up in the way they allocate resources. We want to show them the priority areas that we need to focus on. That healthcare is important. That education is important. If we want to secure the future of Ugandans, we must begin with the young people today who are in school. Just look at the pennies that are allocated to UPE. And you see how there is no prioritization. How do you secure the future of young people who are studying under trees? who have one teacher teaching all subjects in a class. Young people who are writing on the floor and we think we are securing their future. No, we are not. We are robbing their future. How do you tell young mothers who are giving birth on the floor in hospitals across the country, including here in the city center? See the congestion in hospitals. People go to hospital and there's no doctor to attend to them. Where the doctor is present, they don't have equipment to use. And you tell those people, those young mothers that are secure in their future, no, you're not. We are robbing their future. And we must talk about these issues. We must bring them to the fore as a position and say, these must be taken care of. Government pride itself in focusing on infrastructure. Is that true? I don't think so. Of recent, you saw the outcry about the situation of roads here in Kampala, the heart of the country, the face of the country, which generates over 60% of our country's budget. And it is dead. It's not okay. And so we must speak out, we must give direction, and we must rally the people of Uganda to join this cause. This cause, ladies and gentlemen, is not just for us the elected leaders. Of course, you must lead. And that's why the people of Uganda entrusted you and I to lead them, to speak for them, to be their voice. And as we do that, we should rally them to say, please join us in this cause. And I want to appreciate the people of Uganda because they are waking up and smelling the coffee. As the pro traders are demonstrating as we speak. Because they are saying, no, we must speak out. So that's important. As we speak, all the English you can with the front parliament, and we shall speak that English. We must rally the people of Uganda to say, all of us should be able to speak out. Because no one will be safe in a sinking boat. So it is our duty, all of us, as the people of Uganda, to see that we bring to an end this entire mess that we grapple with as a country. This duty goes beyond mere oversight. It is essential for me the principles of good governance and ensuring that every Ugandan benefits equitably from the wealth of our nation. Our duty to keep the government in check is not simply a matter of political rivalry. It is a fundamental aspect of our democratic history, ladies and gentlemen. It is through oversight and scrutiny that we ensure that power is exercised responsibly and that the voices of the marginalized people are heard and represented. As we engage in this process of budgetary deliberations, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to upholding the principles of good governance. Let us ensure that every shilling of public funds is utilized effectively and efficiently to address the pressing needs of our nation. And let us never forget that our duty is not just to our constituents, but to the collective well-being of all Ugandans. And that's why we are national leaders. The people of Nakawa also sent me to Parliament. 
But I don't represent just the people of Nakao. The laws that you pass, the issues you deliberate will affect everybody and it's important that you view ourselves that way. So that the people of Uganda see themselves in us, they hear their voice in our voices. Ladies and gentlemen, as we present our alternative budget to the nation, we reaffirm our commitment to fulfilling our oversight function on budget performance. We shall continue to hold the government accountable and ensure transparency in the allocation and utilization of resources. All in service of the people of Uganda. I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to the members of the Shadow Cabinet and the dedicated staff of the Office of the Leader of the Opposition for their tireless efforts in drafting this alternative budget. There are challenges, and we continue to grapple with challenges. The staff has shrink, we have fewer people, but they are dedicated, and, and we keep moving, because we have got work to do. The people of Uganda don't expect excuses from us. They expect us to deliver on our mandate. The expertise of this team, Shadow Cabinet and the staff that we do have and their commitment have been indispensable in shaping our vision for a more just and resilient Uganda. I'd like to appreciate you all for making the time to be here today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for God and my country. Um, as I do it, I'm um, going to invite my leader, uh, Brand, to take note uh, that I've joined us today from civil society. Civil society plays a very critical role, and it's important that we all to join in hands. As I've said, the struggle we have all need to see a better country is for all of us, it is for leaders, it is for civil society. It is for ordinary folks out there, it is for the traders, it is for the ordinary people, everybody. And so we do appreciate you. I will be taking notes of uh, each one by name. Um, our shadow minister for information at some point will take note of each one of them, but we do appreciate you for coming. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do allow me to invite uh, our OB, not only a leader, but uh, he's an OB in this city, as we were walking down the stairs, he was missing about his time in this city, especially during the project water call, talking a lot about that. Um, he he wrote me with us um, entirely after I grabbed it from an engagement he was at, and so shortly after his remarks, he'll be going back to that engagement, but I'm glad he could make time. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Tabulani Center move. The theme for today is a reflection of our vision for a new Uganda. A Uganda whose resources are exploited for the benefit of the citizens and not for the benefit of a select few individuals. A Uganda that protects and, protect and promotes dignity and basic freedoms and rights for every citizen. A Uganda that puts interests of the people 
the citizens at the forefront of public policy. The alternative budget priorities presented today recognize the plight of the ordinary Ugandan, whom the leaders derive their mandate from, and also pay of what we intend to do in order to make Uganda a country that works for every Ugandan. Ladies and gentlemen, Ugandans deserve better health care, they deserve better education, and they deserve better infrastructure in order for them to live their full potential and benefit and enjoy all their fundamental rights. Because education is essential for producing skilled workers, a workforce that will transform communities, it's therefore important that our children study subjects and courses that are relevant to their passion and natural abilities. We cannot achieve without changing, we can't achieve this without changing or in fact overhauling our entire education system and realigning our education institutions. Considering that 75% of Uganda's disease burden is preventable, then we must make our priority to invest in disease prevention rather than disease cure. This should be done in a skilled and professional health workers through a fair recruitment process and go ahead to remunerate them fairly and on time. We must think about our creative area, think about our creatives, provide conditions that don't only protect their intellectual property, but also create conditions that help them to live to their full potential. About the creatives that will go on and on and on, but the rest, I guess, Dr. Hilderman and uh, others who are creatives and within our leadership will elucidate on that. However, ladies and gentlemen, as attractive as all these alternative policies might be, it is actually impossible to achieve them if the leaders in charge of our national resources cannot rise above their petty selfishness. We must resist, we must reject, in fact, we must eject all forms of corruption in public administration. Otherwise, all this will be going to waste. Our sources will continue sinking down the long drain of personal grief at the expense of our collective well-being and at the lives of our people, our children, and our children's children. As a national unity platform, we shall continue to take decisive action in that regard. Many good proposals have been presented in terms of policy alternatives, in terms of laws, by ourselves and other leaders. But let us be honest, no matter how good our thoughts are, no matter how beautiful our proposals are, they shall never see the light of the day for as long as Dictator Museveni is still in charge of this country. That is my firm belief. Yes. We must continue telling Ghana the truth as it is, instead of, you know, misleading them with eloquent speeches. We must paint to them a picture of the problem and need to go ahead and point at where the problem is. The man who has ruled our country for almost 40 years now is not just a political opponent to us, no. He is the embodiment of Uganda's problem. He's a living testament of corruption. He's the testament of oppression. He is the embodiment of the abuse of all democratic principles. In a nutshell, he is the roadblock. He is the standing block between Uganda and its progress. So let us face the reality and deal with the reality as it is. It's until you diagnose the problem that you'll be able to. I mean, he and his cronies live in extreme luxury while our hospitals are sick and our schools are rotting away. 
Yes, we have alternative policies. Yes, we have brilliant minds here in Parliament. You know, wonderful at the comments, wonderful at debate and all that. But we shall debate, we shall propose, and we shall articulate issues. But let me be clear to you once again, my brothers and sisters, that no matter how good our alternatives are, no matter how well intentioned you our MPs are, it won't make any difference for as long as we don't have any power to implement those good ideas. We must get used to that fact and deal with that fact exactly the way it is. I mean, we can draft the most comprehensive budgets, we can allocate funds meticulously, we can strategize endlessly, but as long as the seven remains at the helm, the efforts will all be like we are raising cups on the following table. We must channel all our energy, we must channel all our passion and all our abilities and all our determination towards one single mission, removing the dictator and reorganizing the country as a citizen of the Uganda. That is the only way this is going to be possible. So I continue to encourage all of us here, President, and those watching us outside, that we must do what we must do. You cannot just take a step unless you unlock your feet. So for now, what we have as a great resource is our collective determination and collective will to have a free country and after having that then we shall go ahead to build a Uganda where all Ugandans are equal regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of where they come from, regardless of religion, tribe or social class. We shall go ahead to build a Uganda where leaders lead with integrity, where leaders are true servants and citizens are the true masters of their destiny. So let us use this resource that we have to put a name to this dictatorship. Let us use this resource to change this country once and for all. I thank you for listening to me, for God and my country. Thank you, Mr. President, for that very elaborate speech. We also thank the leader of opposition for his speech to us all. We believe we have taken in what we have been told. Now, allow me, honorable members, to invite Coach Bob to take us through a small session of, you know, stretching, so we can move forward. Thank you so much. <laughs> Now it is our responsibility to hand here. My introduction to our colleagues. Order, we are here. Just for instructions. I'll be counting one. But keep the smiles. His Excellency Robert Chagrani Sentamu, the 10th President of the Republic of Uganda, has just addressed the motion about the, the ultimate budget of the Office of the Leader of Opposition. The right and I has welcomed the President in the House as they are introducing their budget to the nation. We've heard the president has challenged them that even if they speak a lot of English, even if they have good alternative policies without changing the government, they are doing nothing. So he has advised them to focus on the main issue of changing the leadership from the top office, that is the office of the president, and he has encouraged them to continue spreading the gospel of change. He has advised the members of parliament one, two, to focus 
teach the nation how to focus, how to change. That's how the president has summarized his speech. He has challenged them on who to work on these issues. Other than that, they are facing the big, big challenge. The president, he has just returned from the Netherlands. He returned tonight, but he could not miss the session of talking to the members of parliament. Out of over, don't cheat yourself out of over Red. 60 MPs from the opposition, Four. you can Five. check the numbers and you see Six. how many are around. Seven. He has commanded them to continue spreading. Ten. One house and turn around your bodies like this. On behalf of Keto TV members, one, two, and on behalf of Keto TV staff, I'm not saying this is a journal to have a new member at the time. Rather than the one who never took a moment to join the president party was a magazine of Bakabwe, a challenge of Baba Parliament, Sakuna, Baba Kiriza, Mojuka, Chuku, Kumani, Kizuchi Gwangari, no, or a Tigris and Kizuchi Gwangari, no, Sichidara, Sukogar, Gurun, Sispeech, and Yangi, Sipolis, and Nunzila, and Dika, Sibiana Bibaisa, Rabola, Kuravanti, Bafa, Yoko, Tumulich, which is Bangali, no. Okuvirudia the local sea of the president, but as we continue, thank you so much, Mr. President, for giving us time. <laughs> I will be a group for that as again. Yeah, there is. Come on, Two I think the is enough. Let's just arrange them. 
Ah, não, pô. Eu não sei se você está fazendo isso. 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 Mio kusingi la dalu waka wange wakati mkubeba za uro kufayo ni budget ya nenungi Nebi roze virunji Mbaju kizaba kulembe zeba fe Nti Nebi roze virunji Tujia na vyo biba denga vile itewa Na hechi zibu chetu ina Nebi roze viku makule itewa Hechi zibu hechi singe cha Uganda Ye nache malira yowe limu seveni Nga ye sente ze guanga zona zona Azima lira mkwe kumira mbu yinza Kuguli laba kulembeze wa mwetorode Na kunyikiri za bantu So hechi zibu chetu ino kusoko kujao Ye nache malira mu seveni Then tuberene dembe Ezi visa sanya sente za Uganda Si mkwe jarabia na imu kutere zebio Ebi sanu kutasa bantu Ngama somero, ngama luwa liru Nebi laifana na webicho Chicho yungira kusonga Izigira maso batu uli ya mparlamenti Atari nsonga za komisiona wa moto sewa Well, sagala nsonga eno nene Jiri duisinga kumuntu omu Nsonga jemba desikonye kwe nsonga yenguzi Ekute ejembe Ni wangu bade omu kufe Na hii ya sanga mwusonge yu Na hii ama mkulira yu basi ngo kulia nguzi Okugeza speaker wa fe wano Speaker wa parliament ya Uganda Yenachi nku mkulia nguzi Ele cho cheta goku ugeru wako Nsi na ichimanya Nsi na mkulinga out Kumanga sente Zono nebwa parliament ya nusubulu kuchusubula mbaba Ntu bonji nyo So obolibu nguzi ye kansa Ayono nye Uganda Kati chafuka Institutiono, enguzi ya fuka angeli ya kwe kumida mbu inza na angeli ya kukakanya bafuganya government. So enguzi nge kule mberu anita mongo speaker wawano. No munga mulimu, sibo kabo kaba enari menga mulimu na abafe. Chizibu nyo elana chotu ino chiru anisa, ate tuja chiru anisa. Fenga NUP, tuja kukola, ukozi sebi kolo wa sibi gambo. Wetu ino bu inza wona ukuluwa nyise nguzi Na etu wagala na buli chitongo lecha government Chiko sobu inzo bu ukuluwa nyise nguzi Kuwe nguzi ya sisi giza yu gane mbabida Mkasana kando mchumina cha mwomo mwujo denko Kanjite of talo talo vye talo talo Techeko sanga jamu na kutamza wende mwonja mwe Otanti ukwati Ensonga yu talo talo mwe banama ulire mwe abajite kawo Tewali lutalo rona rona Ukule kango ngamanti ukule chitufu luba lutalo Ukole chitufu weduwa lutalo, then tuli murutalo. Ila tu ino kubela murutalo. Gatulu wa nyise nguzi, gatulu wa nyisobuli yake, gatulu wa nyisobuli na chema lila, do luba lutalo. So, si mchivina chafe, nzendo uza mchivina chafe, tuwa ndiba denga chokula bilako, buli mtu. Kaberenga speaker wa pari ya meti ya lide nguzi, kaberenga minister, na akanga vuruwa, nga bachino kubela. Fenga NUP, tuba wa chakula bilako, tuli option. Ila muyugane mpia, betu bikola, betu jo bikola, natumazo kukuma na chema lila. Kuchime yogera kubigambo ya kona lego mtu ugabe ya gaba, tiwa under siege. Sagala nyo kukendeza kuogera kwange, kukukakanya, ate kusa kuwa memba bange, beng kule mbela mchivina. Njagala nyo njogere kusonga, ezi gasa ibuanga liona. Kati budget yenu, sisi ya NUP yoka. Wabula e reflectinga e chifana nchia opposition yona. So saga la Nsonga za NUP ya tenzi ingi ze mbibine bilara. Diaga na njogele kuchintu e chigasa e guanga liona liona. Si chivina choka nga NUP. Uwe bali nyo. 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 Chana kunyo okubela monsi inga tulo oza. Nti waba obu menyi wa mateka o ina kutesa na menya wa mateka. Waba obu menyi wa mateka, nga wali wo evidence, obu ya obu, obu julizi, obu mudumika. Deni amateka kakore, mbunga amanti te, te amam, omu, waba menye teka, batesa ganye na ye. Deni tuje wa mateka, bivelebi ya kutesa ganye. Baganda bafe, abasi wa makomeda tebaina musango. Noruwe nsongeyo, baina okuyimburwa embagira o, awatalika kwa kulizo, kubati baina musango. Kubaba baina musango, baletewe mkoti, bavunaaniwe, umusango kubakemu vi, obaba kusinge, bejerele. So si kutesa ganyana vo. Iye nkula, 
ya chiyekera te tukirizganya nayo tukirizganya mu fuga e ya mateka erabo tunatwa lwinza ye fuga je tujyo kutambulira it is unfortunate that we live in a country where the leadership thinks or the rulership thinks that when somebody commits a crime you have to negotiate if somebody commits a crime then let the evidence be presented let them be presented in a competent court and let them be either convicted or acquitted we are not going to negotiate our rights we believe in the rule of law if there is the rule of law in uganda let it work if the courts function in uganda let them work our brothers and sisters who are prison, in prison for the longest time, the political prisoners, are innocent and we continue to demand their unconditional release. We are not going to negotiate because if you ask us to negotiate, what do you want to, us to give in exchange for our freedom? Dembe ya abu, ate dembe ya abu edio, sibe ite gefudi wa ayo. Nebiba na atebwa, baja kusiga langa baya ya nile dembe ya abu. So siri akutele sako, na ye, ya abu eba ange kuba constitution ya nizarani. Uh, uh, how far have you gone with that, that issue of uh, Commissioner Matthias Mdogo? Well, everything we do, we do it in the open. We are a transparent political party. And what happened was in public. The information came from the public domain, and we dealt with it as our moral commit. By the speaker responded. What, what's your take on the speaker's letter? The speaker is a criminal herself. The speaker is a criminal, so we don't really have time to exchange with criminals. Thank you very much. At this moment, at this moment, internal conflicts have infiltrated your party. Will this affect the potential alternative The so called internal conflicts are a creation of the media. As you have seen, so many TVs have been on o, 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 out, you know, on rampage, trying to create a non-existent uh, impression that we have conflicts. No, they're not conflicts. The only conflict we have is with criminality, is with corruption, and we deal with corruption uh, as people that know that corruption is a cancer that has bedeviled our country. Thank you. Very Maybe much. lastly, Samadari Mpoka says you are under siege and doesn't know how to help you. What's your take on this statement? Well, we major on majors and minor on minors. Thank you. Kale, my brother, no, and those are the same number of the day. I did president, I joined the several inch body of the one jagger day. Sasa davi singa yewe la nyumbu bila muntaro neva na maule ni baki zako chete kwa ira unse kwa vadwa kara abagambi taina bunde taina bunde bunge la kumuntu we major on majors and minors and minors is excellent the republic of Uganda.